Maybe we should try that again. Uh, now that we actually have a functioning Retron 5 running the freaking game. My name is Anthony John Agnello. This is I Got Next, a streaming talk show wherein we hang out with somebody who does something outside the world of games. We are playing Captain America and the Avengers, which is not what they would call it at this point. Now the Ava Avengers are right. famous. In 1993, Marvel's Captain America and the Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> Marvel's, Marvel's the Captain America and Marvel's the Avengers meet in Disney's part, two. part one yeah. of nine. I didn't know meet Red Chris Skull Pratt. ever wore a suit. Oh, he's a classy guy. Yeah. The Red Skull, Red Skull is in general a classy, classy gentleman. Like Red Skull tying a tie. He's just that scene. He's, you know, he's, you know, he, he polishes it up. We know what well, was Hugo Weaving in the Captain America movie yeah. playing Red Skulls. He's a dapper man. Yeah, but he did not wear a tie. He did not wear a tie. Yeah. He wore a very hilarious face mask. Uh, everybody, this is Alex Young. We introduced Alex just before we had to take a little break there. Alex is the man behind a new documentary called R.E.M by MTV. Alex, that is arguably the most descriptive and direct title I've ever seen, right? Yeah, it used to be, well, the, we pitched a title that was some text, colon, R.E.M. by MTV, and then it was shortened to just R.E.M. by MTV. Oh, just R.E.M. What was yeah. the original text? Well, it's, it's something that happens. I think it's a better choice. There's a line of dialogue or spoken uh, dialogue later in the movie that this comes from, but I kind of like it being a surprise. Oh, you like? Oh, all right, never mind. So, not as a plot point, but it is like a nice little surprise. Everybody, there, there are spoilers about R.E.M.'s career in I'm today's not, stream. It's an emotional sure It's an emotional. Oh, I, yeah, an emotional spoiler. Yeah, yeah. So, Alex is the creator of this. Alex Alex is the, the director of this film. We have a whole lot of okay, R.E.M. No. by MTV related swag sitting here. Yeah. This is We have an actual product display on the show today. Uh, can you zoom in on the uh, can, small can screen? You, can, can you zoom in? You can hold things up. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't work out last time. <laughs> you can oh, totally... You're starting already. Oh my yeah, God. I, I fired it up. So everybody, not only did we have technical difficulties with uh, the console and our, our, our video capture device making sure everything ran, we are playing this today using a Retron 5 which is one of those modern consoles that plays like Super Nintendo games and NES games. And in the process of setting it up, we discovered that the second controller does not work when you plug it in to the Retro 5. This is apparently a known issue with early Retros. Uh, so Alex and I were going to be playing this together. In fact, Alex, you, you said to me last week when we were talking about no! this i was like what would you like no! and you recommended what what was it that you recommended uh i was thinking old terrible fantastic four movie titles no! of which there are a number but playing that for 90 minutes might be you don't want you don't want like bad michael chiklis only if, if his voice is in it, yeah i want if we could if we could have found a way to stream the old fantastic four game and have Michael Chiklis' dialogue from The Shield playing over it. I've never seen The Shield. Oh, it's, it's just him beating people up all the time. There's a guy hitting you in purple hands. So you're already on your boss? This game is almost all bosses. So in lieu of a bad Fantastic Four game, we've decided to play a bad Avengers game. No. Uh, I'm dead. Already? Who are, we playing? Who are we playing here? Whoever you want. <laughs> so you have Hawkeye... The Vision, the Vision who literally just looks like he's drunk all the time, uh, and Iron Man. <laughs> so this is what we're doing instead of co-op today, everybody. We, we are literally doing I Got Next, trading off lives, and as you can see, Captain America The Avengers is a, a little antiquated, and in the event that... <laughs> in the event that we can't get past the first stage, 
We, we have a selection of other Super Nintendo games that we will put to the chat what you want us to play. Grizzlehoff, hello to you. And hello to you, everybody uh, who is hanging out. Hoblon42, Smelly Tunic, Run Jump, Stomp, Yaddle, hello, everybody. Alex, do you have an, is your mom in the chat today? Uh, I don't, I don't think, I think my dad is watching, but I doubt he logged in with a handle. He doesn't, he, he didn't sign in with he's Alex. He's not his dad. He's not a Twitch user. <laughs> Alright, this, that, this happens. This has happened during a stream in the past. What? When there are, there are many people watching. My mother has shown up. Oh, yeah? In the chat. Uh, to offer words of encouragement. Hey! And who are those two guys? Those, okay, Sorry, one, one of them, the guy shooting purple hands at you is either the, the Claw purple or Dr. Claw. Not Dr. Not, not Claw. The Dr. Claw. He's not the Dr. Claw. He does not have Mad Cat. He does not say, no. next time, Gadget. Wow, are you kidding me? I got the bosses. Yeah, God. <laughs> you just get the, the bosses. Dude. <laughs> Alright, I, you know, I should probably stop punching them, because I'm Hawkeye. That seems, that seems the right thing. Don't die, your oh my secret God. wife will be sad. <laughs> my secret farm wife? Yeah, your farm wife. <laughs> my farm wife will be really beaten up about it. This is why, this is why we decided to do the Avengers in lieu of Fantastic Four. There's Quicksilver, oh, hey. who just brings in a, like, hotel room service plate. Uh -huh. <laughs> And then leaves. He doesn't. He doesn't help you fight anybody. He's just a jerk. Which Quicksilver? It is '80s Quicksilver. Okay. He's in a blue leotard. He, he basically dressed like a figure skater. Okay. Uh, like, but a gorgeous figure skater. He looks great. Uh. So anyway, before you fought those bosses, yeah, you were about to tell me a little bit about a little bit more about R.E.M. by N.T.V. before we got oh, to sure. the subject of okay. emotional spoilers. So. Tell, tell me how this even came about, because, I mean, other than the fact that you love R.E.M. and work for MTV. Well, first off, I just want to say that, you know, I was lucky enough to be a part of this thing. It wasn't anything that originated with me. Uh, this wasn't your, this wasn't your brainchild. No, but it is like a fantasy project of anyone who's done it. So, but, did not begin with me. Uh, my department at MTV uh, had previously been involved in any sort of, Musical usage of musical performances post broadcast, let's mm -hmm. say. So, um, Curtis Downs, the band's manager, uh, came to MTV, came to uh, uh, our executive producer Bill Flanagan, and said, "You know, you guys have a ton of content for us. We should put it all somewhere." Yeah, you guys do, and like that's the thing. You have like 30 years yeah. worth of stuff. And then across all the MTV channels, the international, yeah. Melody, and Comedy Central. So the idea was to put out some sort of DVD box set of all these performances. So uh, I was tasked with starting to find some of this stuff. And in addition to that, uh, we thought it was just as much. Uh, yeah, no, I have no idea what's happening. Uh, there's just as much interview material. Why don't we put something together? All right. So I took a crack at a presentation. Great performances, great interviews throughout the years, and people really liked it. They said, let's keep going with this while wow, we're doing this performance box set. So, we ended up making a movie that they really liked. And last November, it's hard to play it's on, so we're super. Uh, last November, uh, this uh, box set came out, it's called REM, REM TV. The box set is 15 hours long, it's six discs, it's five discs of all performances, so the Unplugged, Storytellers, all the international shows throughout all the years, and then the sixth disc is this documentary that I put together. Uh, it played in a couple theaters, one night only, the craft event sort of thing, it's been playing on Palladia uh, for yeah. a while. It, it has been... Not only like playing in theaters occasionally, America, but playing in theaters with the band hanging out. For, that that happens twice. Yeah. twice. More than once yeah. is an exciting development. Yes. Uh, 
So then recently, okay, uh, just a, a few months ago, we put out this standalone Blu-ray, which is just a movie. The box set is six DVDs. Uh, the movie is uh, a Blu-ray. You know, if you want to get the Blu-ray, get it for the audio, because most of this content that we're using in this movie is you know, four by three material shot on video cameras. Ages ago, but, you know, so it's not it's not the gorgeous quality. It's not. It, don't expect a pristine a pristine image, but you know it really gives it a flavor that if you watch this thing and you remember what it was like. Now that's the thing. We're playing a game right now from 1993 on a machine that was made in 2014, but is built to mimic certain, you know, audio-visual effects uh, from 1993. Like, the fact that this has scan lines on it, you know, where, with, like, what you would see on an old, you know, 4 3 cathode ray to television, like, th there is a style that is really cool, even though it's no longer, like, the best fidelity. We lost. We're, we're done. Where we lost at the beginning of the second level. Wow, that is terrible. Okay. <laughs> what? The high scores just make fun of you. Oh no. Awesome, radical, gnarly, and then good job with just no exclamation point. Like just good job. That's not. Like, oh, so we're in between four and four. <laughs> and that's all I've really ever strived to be. Yeah, you like, <laughs> your goal is cool and fair. The goal is cool and fair. Alright, I'm gonna put in Wait, here we go. No, I'm doing this wrong. You know what's between cool and fair? Check this out. Or I get a question mark. Boss is just below gnarly in my heart, in my soul. But yeah, so like the, the sort of low fidelity aspect of it, I think is really cool. And like even the promotional images for the movie have like that sort of grainy, right. old lo-fi look, which I even associate with Orient sound. Like I'm not saying it's dated. Sure, but sure. Well, you know, the interesting thing about the graphics that were made and all of the artwork. What's up, that one sausage? Hello to you. Sorry to interrupt you. All of the graphics and all the artwork uh, are done uh, by a great guy named Chris Bilheimer, who does all of the band's album release covers and all that. And it's all done with uh, the Avengers. Uh, from Michael Speck. And oh, he awesome. loves the lo fi, he loves the, uh, the tube rig, you know, everything like that. So like, once the movie starts out with Catherine Rick flipping on, Lines scrolling across the screen kind of tells you this is not going to be, you know, yeah, um, this is not, you know, <laughs> not, not what this thing is. So, Alex, uh, I, I thought we would try again, okay, but then I went into the options menu, yeah, we're already on we, easy, we're already on easy, okay, that was that was easy. So, everybody here in the chat who is hanging out with us, hey, thank you for coming by, it's very nice to see you on, on this lovely Tuesday. So, we do not have to be committed to Captain America and the Avengers. In fact, screw Captain America and the Avengers because we couldn't get past the first stage. We're putting it to you what we play next. We have a pile of other options. We have X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, Spider-Man and Venom in Separation Anxiety, which I can only assume is about a really painful divorce. Like, I, can't, I don't know if I played that or Maximum Carnage. Maximum, well, Maximum Carnage, you're not allowed to play with two people. Okay. We can't even play with two people in this one because this stupid machine won't let us do it. And that is Apocalypse Apocalypse, right? Yeah, that is, yeah, that is like Apocalypse Apocalypse. Got that it. is the most 90s X-Men game that you can play. That's tempting. It's delicious. We have Super Return of the Jedi. I'm not even going to hold that one up. Or DuckTales. <laughs> and there's always an option for DuckTales. 
Yodel, which one had the Green Jelly soundtrack? The Green Max Jelly. Carnage. Yeah, that was Magic yeah. Carnage. And not only do they, is it Green Jelly, it's Green Jelly doing an illegal, uh... <laughs> Everybody, let us know if the audio has improved at all. Uh, alright, we're, we're getting some, okay, Jedi suffering... Kinda Strange uh, wants to see us be terrible at Return of the Jedi, but I think everybody is voting for DuckTales unanimously. That's the only game I've beaten, so... Zack the One, Duke, Yaddle, everybody says DuckTales. Let's get in DuckTales. Yeah. I'm gonna sneak past you, Alex. Everybody, we get we get the awesome part of actually resetting the Retron 5. I actually really like this machine. If you have... If you have old, uh, old games sitting around, it's pretty freaking great. Now, do we get to use NES controllers? We do not ah. have access ah. to such a thing. I apologize. DuckTales. Yes. In one. Everybody, not only, not only are we going to attempt very quickly to fix, uh, the audio, because I know it is a little low. We're getting, uh... We're getting not just comments in the chat about the audio being low. We're getting we're getting texted by a mutual friend of ours. If you're gonna hold this up, it shows your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, every oh the voice sound is slightly louder now. The game audio still sounds too high. We're gonna turn down the game audio just a little bit more, and we're gonna make sure Alex and I are sitting right. Alex, should I invest? in like full-on flesh-colored you know on the ear mics so we could be like televangelists yeah <laughs> sure I don't know. you should be like ladies and gentlemen if you're watching are you investing this time to go get them or investing money to buy them in a later date it would probably be money to buy okay. them at a later yeah, date probably. you can expense it yeah normal normal, normal. <laughs> All right, you've got, you've got first, man. Okay. You, so this I've is got... BA as in BA. Uh, where do we start? Amazon, right? Oh, I always start... Transylvania is always my number one. Yeah? That's always where I go first. It's the first level I ever played when I played DuckTales once upon a I'll time. I'll do Amazon, so I'll leave you Transylvania. Hopefully, when I beat this in one life. Yeah, in one, if you do this in one life, I'll be really, I'll be really impressed. Alex, a question for you. How the hell did you get into... What, what is it you technically do with your team at MTV? What is your title? What does okay. it say on your LinkedIn page? Uh, my title is Director of the Content Production Group. Uh, we do lots of various uh, ancillary content, non-broadcast content. Uh, there's a team that does a lot of live events for us, and uh, we're also doing a lot of work with... Uh, old library content, which essentially this uh, REM project was the uber test of you know, using this material we have that, you know, there's actually enough stuff to make an entire movie. Uh, nothing in this movie was shot for the movie. Everything existed previously, and uh, went through about 1,500 different assets and tapes to make this thing happen. How much of your life was spent looking through complete old shows and being like, this isn't usable, this isn't usable, I, I can't use it. this, that's out, I can't do that. Well, I had, had a great team, a uh, research team that was sort of the first line of defense when it came to screening material. Yeah. Um, because you would have doubles of tapes, and you would have... You know, well, this is this is the the uh, tape of uh, 30 seconds of losing my religion that was played in a news broadcast once. And <laughs> totally it's, useful. Yeah, it's all there, and uh, you, you, know, you have to spend the time to get through it. And then once you know, once this team, uh, Colleen Eliza, once they went through this stuff and uh, said what was good, then I took a pass and put it in. <laughs> uh, Can I wait? See, you just you 
took that hit right there, uh, but can I say that I love that you immediately went to the secret treasure room? Like, no hesitation. I didn't even think about it, really. Like, just, I'm going down there, I'm immediately going to the secret treasure room. That is, that is the opposite of the process that you're describing. Of hunting yeah, yeah, yeah. slowly but surely for something well, that you can possibly you know, there was need. stuff that, you know, I just remembered. Like, stuff I have I did the VHS. Like, well, I know they were on this, but I know this thing. So. Alright, for you, like what? What did you, what did you tape off of 120 minutes? I, ha I have, uh, I still have Michael Stipe posting 120 minutes on VHS. Uh, when Monster came out. I love that. And, uh, it's great. Every time they come back from the commercial, he introduces another famous old person. So, he says, Hi, I'm Sigourney Weaver. Hi, I'm, uh... Wow, that dates it. Hi, I'm Marlon Brando. Chat, uh, you, you know that I, I love a good 90s reference. Why would Michael Stipe be referring to himself as a bald Sigourney Weaver? Tell me that, Chad. Lay it on me. That's actually not that difficult when I think about it. Or it is. Like, if you're 20, do you know that? I don't think so. Probably not. You don't, like, that That scene, in, like, in the hospital room, Yeah. that, that iconic moment is no longer iconic. That's, that is detritus. <laughs> there is... No, I think... Yeah, there you go. There you go. Hello, ah. Joker. Okay, let me, let me make sure I parse this out. I swear to God, I first eat those handles meat spaces in them. Joker Milan Isco, hello to you as well. Hello to everybody else. Uh, we we are not pros. We couldn't get past the first screen of the second stage in Captain America and the Avengers. Oh, come on. That was a slip. That was a Oh, it's... See, okay. Oh, we have to go back to the It's yeah. not it's not the NES controller. It's the fact that we're playing on an HD TV. Because there you are dealing with a slight delay that we would not and like it's it's a fraction of a second. But it's enough to throw you off your game. Did you say something? I, I swear. Okay. Well, I I don't want to question somebody who immediately went to the treasure room. You clearly know your ducktails. You don't have to go back, right? Uh, no, no. But I know that. We have all of our duck dollars. We have all of our speed duck cash. Uh, I'm just gonna roll on through right back there. Uh, bam! So why REM, man? Was REM your first musical love? Was that like. Pearl Jam was my first musical love. Pearl Jam was Pearl your Jam. first musical love? Uh,. Yeah, first, uh, first album ever bought was, uh, versus on cassette. Wow. Was it the original release on cassette when it was, like, there's a different track listing or a different title or something? I, so. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Chat, chat, help me out. There, what was the, what was different in the original release of Pearl Jam Versus? So Pearl Jam Versus, you're, you're talking contemporaneous with that Captain America game, 1993, and that's the thing that knocked you out. What song got you on that? Oh, go. Oh, go. Such a good song. Oh my God. Go. Such a good song. I was a little behind on popular music as a kid. Uh, and I just thought that the world game sounded like something respectable to jump into. Mm. Uh, so I looked at it. What happened with the launch pad? It takes you back, right? Launch pad will take you back. Alright, I, I can do this. I can do this. No, why? Uh -huh. oh, 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 oh. oh, you drop it off and then you get more? Ouch. Look at that! Now what, secret rooms? Yeah, see, I don't know that. Oh, that, that one's a lifesaver. Get that cake. Get that sweet cake. Dude, yes! Versus is the one with Animal. Yes. Which is another amazing song. Track two. Oh, God. So good! Go, Animal. Daughter. Daughter. Yeah. Killer. What do you think that people who play acoustic guitars in poorly, you know, uh, populated pubs would do without the song Daughter? Or Elderly Woman. <laughs> elderly woman. Yeah, elderly woman is equally yeah. essential. 
elderly woman is like the most important thing for like, you're right that's the one that that guy needs to survive it's the most random acoustic guitar performance i've ever seen in my life was in bridgewater pennsylvania i uh, went to a bar and saw a guy standing on the bar playing faithless the wonder by radio wow so blown away. That's an unusual choice. Yes. Deep cut. Well, not, not deep cut. Uh, Caesar 37J, we are not using an emulator. I mean, technically we're not using an emulator. We are using a machine that uses emulators. We are using an original cartridge of DuckTales uh, being played through a restaurant fire. Uh, and that is what we are doing. <laughs> this is, what's the next game? Caesar 37 j When? when well, once we, we beat this. Yeah, once we conquer <laughs> DuckTales. Once we make DuckTales feel our friggin' wrath. Then we'll, we'll decide on the next game. So, Versus gets you into music. That's your first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Crow soundtrack. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> the Crow soundtrack. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, just 1994 and 93 just, like, uh, dominated music in the beginning. That's amazing. Don't know if I was purple. Yes. Yeah, of course. Um, wow, I'm gonna die now. I, I totally fucked this up, but I, I, I had... Oh, nice. I didn't even know it was there. Holy oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I could really use a cake. Oh, no. Wow. Uh, we couldn't even meet a single level. That's it? Why don't we do Transylvania? Alright, alright, we'll get... <laughs> let's, let's get back in there. Make this happen. Wow, the Crow soundtrack. So is... Are you with me on The Cure's Burn being best Crow soundtrack? The Cure's Burn. That's, that's the Crow soundtrack track. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm gunning for, Burn. I was confused for a little bit because... Oh, that's true. Different yeah, burn. different yeah, burn. That's why I stopped it for a second. Well, it was 1994, so everything is called burn or hurt. Yeah, or <laughs> or anger song. I don't think anything is actually called anger song. I didn't know for years that it was burn. Oh, yeah. I don't think I did either. So then, monster. I take it, monster is your first. Yeah, animal. Monster is my first. Oh yeah, album. Uh, What's the frequency, Kenneth? I remember that seeing song? the video premiere on MTV. I want to say it was Sensio uh, introducing it. But who knows? Uh, it wasn't Kennedy? I don't know. Could have been. Uh, oh. Oh, God. Oh. Cybom, uh, <clears throat> we will definitely get to the moon level. And yes, the moon level has the best music in the game. Who covers the moon level song? Does somebody cover the moon level song? Yeah, one of the one of the one of the I, the advantage I think probably yeah, yeah, yeah. that which the advantage is now old school man. Right. The advantage is now considered some vintage cuts. Which not around. I don't think they are. No, I, I, I find that deeply distressing. Why Why would the Beagle Boys be like, huh, this is... <laughs> that's just what he's always doing. That's his creeper maneuver. But, like, why Why would he set up the thing that's going to destroy him immediately? Yeah, it's sort of a... Don't do that. It's like a bad Hammer Brothers. <laughs> uh, Duke, the mini-bosses. The mini-bosses mini -bosses. Yes. covered that. Yes. That's awesome. Uh... So what does he give you? He, he just tells you there's a false wall. He tells you to go to a place. He tells you to go do a thing. Yeah, he's captured yet. <laughs> yeah, you freed him. It's, it's not a big deal. Uh, so, is that... So yeah, 94, yeah. Crazy, uh, crazy year for music discovery. Do they become do they become your obsession? Do they replace Pearl Jam? Yeah, well, you know, they were the first band that I got into that had a really which was yeah. That's an important moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Columbia House. 
Got all of them, got all the albums. You got 13, 13 uh, songs for a penny. 13 yeah. albums for a penny. So if anybody in the in the audience knows what the Columbia Music Club is that isn't Duke or Yodel, I will be deeply impressed. Okay, if anyone does know what it is and they're interested in it, I don't know if you saw the thing on AV Club. Oh, did AV Club do a thing? AV Club on? did a retrospective with three of uh, three of former workers for the Columbia House Club. Wow! One of them, Sasha Fair Jones. Uh, another. Uh, and I made a documentary about working at the Columbia House Music Club wow. called The Target Shoots First. And it's all on Vimeo, and it's like 75 minutes long. It's amazing because this guy got a job at Columbia House and just walked around the office all day with a camera, videotaping every meeting, videotaping everything that's going on, going into the factory, what? taping everything. No one cared. Everyone was just like, here's the guy with the camera. And he made this movie. Uh, when, 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 what period was all of this happening? It was the like, heyday. Like the heyday. Yeah, yeah. So he worked under his name. It's an odd, like, it's a bizarre thing to do at that time. Right. Like, to be like, like yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get, bring in a camcorder. Well, it was the only time that it would have been allowed. Yeah. So wow. he had this camcorder, and he was working on the magazine, the catalog. Okay. So the catalog is. They are curating. They're curating the, well, what do we like? Well, that's why Sugar is, like, always on the catalog. Because, you know, these guys just got to do whatever they want. And it's fascinating. Wow. Uh, you know, I just think you'll know that, like, you, you would get these bucks and for a penny. And do they part of the reason cheap is because they replicate them. So, um, and they also kind of screwed everybody by something. So. All right. That, that, makes, that makes all the sense in the entire world. Uh, I, I find it, like, I was gonna ask, how did they, how did they possibly have made money when basically every 13-year-old was stealing from it? Like, and man. That is just While playing Duck. Yeah, you know, I, I think it, yeah. I don't remember the exact, uh, discussion of the money, but it, they did make money. Yeah. They were able to make money, and part of it was because they were saving money on location. They weren't having to buy these tips. They were saving themselves. And, uh, the, a lot of the payments for the artists fell into, uh, promotional territory. Oh, so okay. So they got away with some stuff. Mm -hmm. But, am I going the right way? Yeah, second one. Second one. Yeah. Uh, it's a great documentary, and uh, you'll never see anything like it. So, what, on the subject of documentaries, I mean, have you always been interested in making documentaries? Uh, or is this just, or was this just an opportunity where all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is a way that I can, you know, flex, like, my artistic muscles in a way that I've just never considered? Yeah, you know, it was, I never thought about doing documentaries. I never thought I could be the kind of guy that, you know, shoves a camera in someone's face to get them to talk about, you know, I never thought that was me, and uh, so I just never thought I would do a documentary, but it turns out there are more ways to do documentary than one, so uh, I think my inspiration on this was more all the music programming I love, not, not necessarily film. Uh, although I love documentaries and uh, when I find someone I like, I kind of binge on their stuff. So, I, you know, when I was doing this, I was watching a lot of Adam Curtis's stuff. And, uh, one block. But, you know, yeah, if, I'd say, if I was inspired by anything in making this, it was the MTV programming that it was built from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, there is... It is an interesting process to take material that you yourself didn't produce and call that into something brand new. You know, it's it's yes and no. We, we were discussing my editor, Dave Leopold, uh, who might be watching. Uh, we, Hello, Dave Leopold. We, you know, we put this together in the edit. There was never a script. There was an outline. And there was footage and try to put this together. Am I not projecting? Okay, this is projecting. How about this? All right. We'll give him this. Don't worry about it. There's a baby that lives next door. We're going to wake that baby up. Okay. So, wake that baby up. 
you know, because you didn't shoot this stuff and because you didn't make it yeah. in the first place, you can be really objective about it. Oh. So you put a clip down and you put a track down on it and you add the edit and if it feels great to you, then it's great. Mm. It's not, you're not trying to, you know, say, well, I shot this really well and, you know, I really asked a great question there. It's like, here's all this material that I found and we put it together and when it feels great, you know it's going to feel great for other people and that turned out to be the case. Awesome. Uh, everybody, if you are just joining us, welcome to Games Radar Plus Live. This is I Got Next, our brand new talk show. Today we are playing DuckTales. It might say on your screen that we were playing Captain America and the Avengers for Super Nintendo. We tried that. We weren't very good at it. It did not go well for us in any way, shape, or form. And now, myself, Anthony John Agnello, uh, social editor at Games Radar, and Alex Young, director of the new documentary, R.E.M. by MTV, are doing a run at being DuckTales, because that's what you do. That's what you do when you reach down into your soul and make it. How's the music? Right, everybody says that they're enjoying the music, but that it is too loud. <laughs> we definitely got to figure out how to get our level. See, part of the problem is when you play an old game like this, you have to rely on tools in the broadcasting software to adjust the volume. Here, pause it for one second. All right. Everybody, we're going to make a quick adjustment. Captain Art, hi, I'm new, and uh, well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are, we are happy that you're here. Who are these nerds, and why aren't they playing? <laughs> Who are these freaking geeks playing DuckTales? We're not geeks. We are, all right. You got nerds to play DuckTales on an afternoon for work? <laughs> yes, why wouldn't you? Everybody, uh, I, we've made a quick little adjustment. Hopefully that will help. Uh, wait a second. OBS, you be nice. There we okay, go. Okay. There we go. Hold on one second. We're going to get it back going. Hopefully that will fix. This game is a Shovel Knight ripoff. Wow. Oh, Durant's a map. Come on. That is an amazing, amazing claim. I want everybody to take a moment and look at this because this is what... Time makes fools of us all. This game is a shovel knife. Either Duris and Matt, is that a hilarious troll or are you being serious? Wait a second, somebody is tra tra trolling us. Duris and Matt, who are you? What is happening there? I'm I'm wise to your con, sir or madam. What's gonna happen here? What's gonna happen here? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna get through. You're gonna okay, get okay. through. You're fine. All right, all right. He's he's stuck there. He's, stuck. he's up there <laughs> thinking about his life choices. <laughs> oh, he's back. There he is. You know what? I want I want I want everybody to just be with me on one thing really quickly. Of the Disney Capcom games, Ducktales is amazing. Rescue Rangers is just not that good. I'm just I'm just putting that out there. Wow. I'm saying it. <laughs> well, I think it's a bold thing to bring to the table 25 years after the fact. You know, what have I played? I had Mickey Mouse Capade. Oh, Mickey Mouse Capades. Mickey Mouse Capade, I had nightmares about that game. It feels like the old cartoons. Yes. And, and like, it feels... Like it, old, fe old. it feels like the old, old cartoons, and it also has that vaguely... I think we're good over here. Yeah, we're good over here. It has that vaguely sinister quality that they did. Yes. With, uh, what's his name? Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. I've no. fallen into hell. Oh. Wow. I... <laughs> was that it? Are we done again? No, okay, good. Doris and Matt, that was an amazing troll. I fell for it almost immediately. But wait, and... is Shovel Knight like this? I've never played it. Oh, Shovel Knight is... You, dude, why have you not played Shovel Knight? You would love Shovel Knight. Is it Knight. on consoles? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can play it on every... Literally, you can buy a refrigerator and it probably plays <laughs> Shovel Knight at this point. <laughs> Piss poor. All right. Wow, we're we are not acquitting ourselves well. Uh, this is shameful, everybody. I can't talk and play. 
What about the second batch here? Uh, we're not we're not giving up Judgment. Yeah. Even though Does we, this take thing take a game genie? It does take a game genie, I assume. I mean it's the exact same it's the ex actually I don't know how that would work. Because what it does is you put the cartridge in, it rips the game out of it, and then puts that in. Uh-huh. And Oh, Zach the one. I'm okay, everybody can hear us now. The game audio is a little low. We can adjust that if you guys want. But uh screw that. Alright, this time, man. Alright, we, we beat one boss before. Count it. It's right. not there. Wait, let's yeah, alright, we're gonna oh, go yeah. we're gonna get it. Least here. favorite. Oh, Himalaya is his least favorite. The mines are my least favorite. Yeah, but you can't jump. You can't bounce. Except for the, the bunnies. <laughs> so, I, I think... <laughs> God, I love that. I love this sprite. Uh, okay, so rank the Disney games. I only really... Well, I played four. Uh, what, what there's Mickey Mouse Capades. There's DuckTales 1 and 2. There's uh, Rescue Rangers 1 and 2. Yeah, there I is, never played the twos. There is Secret MVP... Which is Little Mermaid. Oh, the Little Mermaid that. NES game is awesome. I don't know if it counts, but I count it. Uh, Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. Oh, it definitely counts. Yeah. Weird game. Very weird game. I like that. I remember liking it. I didn't own it. This uh, is a really hard game. And then I never played Tailspin. Oh, Tailspin. Uh, Tailspins. Tailspin. Not great. If there's any, if there's any Tailspin NES fans out there. Uh, I apologize for slighting your, your old fave, but not great. Not excellent. We're here because it's easy to get the Bubba Duck life expansion, which is what we want. Wait, who's Bubba Duck? Bubba Duck's the caveman duck. Yes. <laughs> yes. Certainly. What's the, uh, Mrs. Be Beersley? Beadsley? Mrs., uh, oh. Beakley? Uh, no. No. M Miss. Yeah. Wait a second. I think it might be Mrs. Beagley. Because she's she's Webigail's aunt. Webigail. Webigail. That's a name. That's a thing that a human being or a duck if, would name. If DuckTales was out now, there would be like 50 people named Webigail. Do you think that there are some people out there that have named their child Webigail? Because that would be a bummer, man. I would feel now really bad. Now they would. Not, not then. People didn't do that back then. It's like how there's like a million Khaleesi's now. There's not a million. A million. There's not a million. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> if you're doing well, you don't pick the ice level. Or doing yeah. poorly, you don't pick you the know, ice you level. You don't pick the... <laughs> well, see, if we get the ice level out of the way, then at least it's out of the way. <laughs> so the that's a that, that's that great <laughs> logic right there, right? Uh, so, Alex, this is, this is part of the theme of this show, everybody is that we're going to have people from every single walk of life joining us to play video games and talk about them, and a lot of that is going to entail people that don't play a lot of video games. Alex, you do play a lot of video games. I, I always have a game that I'm playing. Oh, I have two games right now. <laughs> two but games. I, I, I feel like I'm like, you know, I'm like the Taylor Swift fan of video games, you know? Like the people that only listen to something like Taylor Swift. <laughs> like for games, uh, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not playing Shovel Knight. I might eventually play is Shovel it, Knight. Is it? So you're saying? See, that's but not I'm true. Playing, I'm playing Arkham Knight right now. You're playing Arkham Knight. It's very mainstream. You're you're a big Assassin's Creed fan, I know. No, I'm done with that. Oh, you're done. You're you're moving on. I, I, I'm so over that. Uh, I'm playing Final Fantasy VI on my phone right now. Oh, uh, how how did you play it back when? No, no. My first was seven. I. Yeah, I was too impatient for role-playing games. How are you feeling about Final Fantasy VII remake? Are you into a, a new Final Fantasy oh, VII? Is. Oh, for sure. Oh, I want to relive it, but and I don't think I'm too precious about you know changing things and making sure that we can still see the chat, everybody. Uh, yeah, you know, I I cut them a lot of slack. I liked all the 13 games. I know that's like a Dude, big faux pas. All right, uh, yeah, everybody, you you heard it here on Games Radar Plus Live. The Final Fantasy 13 games are awesome. I uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Not, I thought they were a lot of fun. I like the characters. I did not care for two that much. And that's my least favorite. Yeah, two. Oh come on. 
Alex, we... Oh, yeah. Um, Darkwing Duck. Yeah, Darkwing Duck. That is a I very... Never, I never played that. Yeah, it's a very... It's very hard. It's like Mega Man. Oh. It's a very, very hard Mega Man huh. clone. Uh, Wait, here. do you have any other Disney games? I have no more Disney games uh, here, okay. unfortunately. I, we don't have access to my full archive. Everybody, we're going to put this to the chat. We were defeated by Captain America and the Avengers early on. We're getting our asses handed to us in DuckTales. I thought you were, like... I thought that was a, a, a backed boast when you were like, I'm going to do this without dying. I almost made it. You almost made it. But talking and playing... Uh, it's a whole different ballgame. I ball don't game. normally talk and play. <laughs> Play so you don't have do to you talk get to you get you get like into like do you when you play games do you sit there and do you zone out can you not do anything yeah yeah I start sentences and then you know <laughs> yeah uh, yeah uh, yeah uh huh like that um I, during the days that you were taping Michael Stipe off of, of 120 minutes uh -huh. I, my favorite maneuver would be when my friends would call me in like high school, junior high, early high school, and want to have the relationship advice conversation. Uh -huh. And so, like, my friend Claire would call me. She'd be like, oh, what do I, do I tell him I like him? And I'm like, yeah, just, like, go for it. Be honest. She would always be like, are you playing Castlevania? Like, no. <laughs> not at all. That's not happening. She'd be like, you're full of shit. I can hear. She's like, are you playing the erotic Castlevania pachinko machine? <laughs> Yeah, because that's what I, I I could purchase the erotic. It, it's not just the erotic Castlevania pachinko machine. It's the erotic violence pachinko really? machine. That's what it says at the end. Of, if everybody is not aware of what we're talking about, we're talking about the new Castlevania game that. Uh, that <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna switch it to Wait, easy. You gotta kill Zach the one. Read that. Zach the one. I googled it and could only find a woman with Webigail as her display name, but nothing in the white pages. Nice job. If I marry that chick, I'll name our child Webigail. Zach the One, vision. If, if you are a man or a woman, you are a person with a vision, and I respect it. It's one that I respect. Mines, mines. All right, yeah. Well, we're going to go back in here. I, I don't feel bad about playing this uneasy. I don't, I don't feel like we're, we're, we're disgracing ourselves. Mm. Oh, you don't feel good yeah, about it? Oh, we need the key. Yeah, that's right. We got to go to Transylvania. Mm. Wait, did they give us the key or we have to find the key? You have to, you have to, you can't just find it the first time you go to the level. You have to go back. Oh, so we still have to beat down. Magicka. Yeah, you still have to, you still have to Magica beat Magicka. Magicka the, Magicka the spell. <laughs> and, uh... Has is Gyro awesome. in this? Yes. Gyro is... Well... He's back at home base or something, right? You never see him. Oh. I was, about to, I was about to say that Gizmo Duck is in this. Yes. Oh, there yeah. Oh, okay. Right as soon as you get in. Yet yeah, Yaddle. Oh, Konami's new business model is erotic pachinko. That's just accurate. It's just true. That's, that's what they do now. There is a new Contra slot machine. Which is just like, like the logo, one picture of a guy with a gun, and then mostly nude women, and like, mostly nude anime women. Thirty women. Well, welcome, welcome to the new age, my friend. <laughs> this is this is what video games are now. What was the first game you ever played? What oh. got you, what got you going down this road? You know, I uh, I broke my collarbone. And was in the schoolyard. Oh, and, all right. Uh, I was going to be stuck at home for a while, and my dad brought me a Nintendo. Wow! Uh, and I didn't even know I wanted it. And he said, "Here's the Nintendo," and it was amazing. And it had uh, it had uh, Mario One. All Duck right. Hunt, you had a little bit of the multi cartridge action. Zelda, Zelda. And I guess you know, uh, You'd it was Zelda more than Mario. Zelda more than Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was, and that, that was the thing that just broke your head. You were like, this is the greatest thing of all time. Yes. I feel like there was a something immediately following that that really did it. Maybe Mega Man. Maybe. Which Mega three. Man? Three. 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 Uh, that was later. Three. That was a few years later, though. Love three. Uh, oh, and then, 
It did not have a Super Nintendo. It had a Genesis. And that was most, those were the sporting days. <laughs> Hockey. The sporting yeah. Days. The NHLPA days. Yeah. I had, a, uh, I had a notebook where I kept track of my season. And it was the Maple Leafs. I don't know why. I love it. No one was allowed to be the Pens of Pittsburgh. So no one was allowed to be the Pens. So we just didn't, even when we were playing alone. I don't know why. Like, no <laughs> one was checking. I could have been the Pens. But I, I was the Maple Leafs. Uh, I like that, like, that, that's like an honor rule. That you're uh, like, all right, nobody can be the pen. Nobody can feel a mew. You're right. It's out. Yeah. It's out. N not allowed. Don't do it. <laughs> Mickey Mouse Capade isn't developed by Capcom. Wikipedia says it was published by Capcom yes. and made by Hudson Soft. It well, is. It is a very Hudson it's, Soft game. It's yeah, not yeah, the yeah, same yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. There she is. What's yeah, her name? Yeah, there she is, everybody. Com commenters, what's her name? What's her name? Uh, Leap of Faith. It's uh, Kathleen Turner. That's, that's, that's shitty. I feel bad now. Yeah. I didn't need to say that. Kathleen Turner is a lovely woman, a talented actress who does not look like a giant duck it's in a an hidden, apron. Let's let's be clear. All right, uh, I got. I, are there hidden treasures in every level? No, I think they're there are not. Two. I think there, there are only two. two. I think so. Because I remember like driving myself bananas trying to find other ones. Mousecapade was total BS. Minnie ruined everything in the second level. Absolutely correct, Yodel. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, no, wait. I'm... Wait. Wait. I think, that, I think no. this is... A... Yeah, no, I messed no? that up. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I'm okay, in the okay. wrong place. I'm in the... <laughs> nanny. It's not Nanny from Count Duckula. Hoplon. Mrs. Be Miss Beakley. Miss... Miss, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Bertha... Miss Beakley. Mrs. Bertha Beakley. Bertina. Bentina Alright, sure. Yeah, so uh, Genesis then uh, only had some access to the PlayStation, then uh, then college in the 64, obviously. Oh, yeah. An, an, essential, gold, golden eye an essential aspect years. of the collegiate experience. Yeah. I had one semester where I scheduled it so I had classes two days a week, and that's when I got 120 stars on Mario 64. Bold. Yes. Extra bold. Yeah. All right. Take okay, this okay. over. Where One level going? down. We're making this happen, everybody. We're back in the saddle. We're already billionaires. <laughs> We're filthy rich. We're making this happen. It's a glorious day. Uh, also, there's a clone, Huey. Yeah. Or is that Dewey? I, I don't know why. Like, could they not get a blue I, that oh, was the blue from yeah. the blue in the back? I find it like I find the politics right, of this game it. deeply upsetting. That like killing animals with a stick. Killing animals with a stick. Uncle Scrooge is rated based on how much land money he's uh -huh. raised. It's deeply disturbing. <laughs> land money. What the hell does that land even money. mean? <laughs> I've never noticed that before. Why does Ducktales have a rating called land money? This is a disturbing development. I don't, I, I don't know if DuckTales would... I actually heard... I thought there was going to be some sort of cartoon reboot, but I don't think he's going to be able to be so blatantly rich. He'd yeah, he, he There's cannot, no way, yeah, right? He can't be so awful. Uh, yeah, it's really... So the remake of DuckTales, DuckTales Remastered, that we have not talked about in depth because it's awful. Uh, all respect and love Way Forward Games who made that, but uh, it's not good. Uh, I love your other stuff. What but, other stuff? Oh, they, they, man, they, they do a lot of great stuff. They make these great Metroid-style adventure games called Shantae. Shantae, you say? Uh, yes, yes. Sashay. Uh, actually, you do sashay regularly in Shantae. It's great. Those are great games. Uh, if you have a PlayStation 4... Tricky again. That guy's a, just a schmuck. Uh... Yeah, the, the Shantae things are their big ones. They made the new Boy in His Blob for Wii, which uh, is also very good. Uh, come on. Come on. Oh. oh, no. Why did you go back here? I don't know. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Beautiful. We really wanted this land money over here. <laughs> 
You're going. Oh, there we go. That's they fine. they weren't doing anything to you. This is their spaceship. They're harmless. And like I'm oh, assuming this is a regular thing. Yeah, like you gotta go in there and steal all their land money. That's just not. Cool. Do you remember the Gizmo Duck Saga? Yeah, it well, was like a whole arc. It was like it was you know back when they had the daily shows. There would be a movie ish thing right. that would spread across a week. Yeah, I don't. Call it I Super don't, DuckTales. Super DuckTales. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember like the specifics, but I remember it being very involved and pretty emotionally harrowing. Well, I, I remember a scene where so someone steals all of his money, all the, of his money. The, out ner of the nerd who is Gizmo Duck, by the way, Fenton Quackshell. <laughs> Fenton Quackshell. Oh, we have no reason to go back. He was not a character. No, he was prior not a character. to this arc, no, no, correct? No. I'm remembering that. He had that, an overbearing right? mom. I remember. Single and loving it. This is an alternate timeline. Is this set in the future or the past? The, 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 the DuckTales video game takes place outside of the DuckTales continuity. And is, is there a, continuity? Except for those, except for those, those five for episodes. Those five episodes. But anyway, I remember there was. Uh, there, so they stole his money, and they hid it in a lake somewhere. That's not useful. And he dove into the lake and <laughs> counted the money. Like swimming around for like thirty seconds to make sure it's all there, and he was like, "I'm missing eleven cents or something." Oh no! And like, could you imagine like a rich character doing that and like this is your hero now? <laughs> no. And then he finds you eleven cents. It's like, oh okay, shoot. Like the audience, like, that's so big dark. Audience. Yeah. Oh my god, Uncle Scrooge is awful. Yeah. See if you. Yeah. <laughs> Here's where it gets nerdy. Here's where it's like, um, let me point out to you. Uh -huh. Uh, in the original Carl Barks comics about uh, Scrooge McDuck, most of them are about him. They're like very like. What's going on here? I don't know. I, I think we've run into a moment of the game cheating. Okay. You want the eleven cents yeah. that's sitting inside of that uh -huh. treasure chest? Uh. Yeah, and, and like in the in the old comics, the idea was Scrooge like was like more of an adventurer. Who would gain a fortune and then lose a fortune? Oh, and it was only like no money bit. Yeah, like it was like late in his life that he became. Hold on to it. Yeah, like there, like there's a whole thing where like he's like a prospector. Oh really? And yeah, I mean they're weird too. Like like 40s and 50s Uncle Scrooge comics like. There's like there's like a whole thing that I I've, I have not read these issues myself. I've read them in a wonderful column that is published on Comic Book Resources. Uh, but like there's like a whole like overboard like Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell overboard thing that happens, where a woman tries to steal Scrooge McDuck's like gold from prospecting, uh, and then he like forces her to work in his mind when oh he catches her. It's really dark. It's aggressively dark. Is it a character we know? No, no, no. She's she's just a, a comic. It's, it's Mrs. Beakley. <laughs> That's so grim. Oh my god. So now that you finished one documentary. Oh no! Oh, no! Are you done? Ah. Oh. Don't ask me questions. Get back in there. Me? Yeah. All right. Yeah. You you've got to. Wait, that's the end. Oh, the spaceship is the end. The yeah. spaceship is the end. <laughs> right. Which, uh, way, which way am I going here? I'm going to the right. Down to the right. Yes. Let's say tomorrow somebody says, we're, we are so thrilled with the work that you've done on REM by MTV uh, that we want you to make another documentary right now. Yeah. And you can pick whatever you want. It doesn't, you're not even restricted to music as a subject. Sure. What is it that you want to do? More than anything. Like, what would be your dream project? Uh, well, I think it would be music. It would be music? Yeah. And I, I would love to do something uh, for the Beastie Boys. Oh, man. I think they deserve it. You know, I think eventually okay. everyone is going to have a movie. It's right. It's just the way, you know, it's too easy. That's the way things are progressing? Yeah. I, and I don't mean, like, necessarily from us, but, you know. No, right. I think, uh, you know, especially bands that aren't around anymore, you know, they want to continue... Uh, 
getting themselves, you know, their music out there because it should be out there. Right. And, uh, you know, the great thing about Spotify and the, uh, and, you know, Sirius and stuff like that is that, you know, they're playing this stuff that radio hasn't been playing. Like, it's kind of unfair that, you know, R.E.M. is so great and they maybe don't fall into a, uh... Keep the pogo going! Oh my god! Just hold it! <laughs> oh my god! Secret treasure! Oh. Wow, I honestly, like, my heart just fell out of my chest almost with relief. So anyway, they maybe don't fall into, like, classic rock or whatever aggressive, like, awful thing <laughs> right. that uh, alternative rock radio has turned into. You know, but something to, you know, remind people that this music is timeless, this music is great, and I think, uh, you know, I think putting out new products is part of that. So here, here is my odd question for you. Is there a moment when something becomes not timeless even though it's still good like can something be great and be so tied to an era that like it loses some of its relevance even though it's sure still but I, I don't know how relevant that's going to be to a new audience i guess oh really i don't know like i the, the thing that always pops in my head a mainstream music, audience a mainstream audience is i i listen to something like i'm not even gonna say like the beatles but like earlier <laughs> Encrypting methods, my butthole clenched when you were trying to get uh, that secret treasure. Everybody's butthole clenched at the exact same time. Ooh, all right. Uh, but like I, I like I went through a jag earlier this year where all I listened to was the Birds' debut album. Okay. Turn, turn, turn. And like, whoa, whoa, no! oh God! Ah, that's fine. That's fine. We're gonna get through this right now. Everything is fine. Uh, I, like, and the birds turn, turn, turn. Like, yeah. it, it doesn't sound. It's a, it's a movie staple. That yeah. Yeah. And like that whole record, like they they do a cover of uh, Oh Susanna, which is like like the most <laughs> '60s folk band thing to do in the entire world. But it kicks ass, and it doesn't sound. It really doesn't sound dated, especially like if you listen to a lot of indie rock now. Uh huh. Like, it, it still sounds very vital. It still sounds very contemporary. And I just listened to Crazy Town Butterfly yesterday. Not for fun, necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should uh, go to YouTube and find the uh, performance of Crazy Town Butterfly on Fashionably Loud. It was a concert uh, and fashion show that would happen at spring break. And it's great. It's actually great or no <laughs> not yeah. actually great oh here he is there he is with the wrong color scheme yep thank you Fenwick oh no Fenton. what that was odd Fenton 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 Fenwick is uh, Fenwick. Vernon Fenwick uh, April O'Neil's cameraman <laughs> there, yeah. wow you remember Vernon's last name that's amazing yeah. what's Irma's last name Irma was her roommate Irma also worked at the news station. Yeah. Irma was the hot, nerdy one. And everybody, Irma was the hot one. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, a big rat. A big moon rat. That acts like a cat. Uh, oh, man, there is a moment that you're supposed... Yeah, you're only supposed to hit him when he's running. There, oh, there we go. There we go. Now this is happening. Uh, come on, fall. Uh, no, but I remember burn. There we go. Burn was the boss. Burn is played by Whoopi Goldberg in the new movie. That is bizarre. Yeah. That's very strange. So the point I was trying, I was starting to make in a belabored way. Yeah, that's right, Yaddle. I said it. Really, Anthony? Yes, really. Uh, <laughs> but like, okay, so the birds I can listen to and it still sounds like vital and new. But I listen to like Elvis which every few years goes by and I try to like Elvis again <laughs> and it never works. And part of the reason I think is because Elvis sounds hopelessly dated to me. Like sure. irredeemably dated to me. I mean, there are certain things that I just don't even attempt yeah. to get into. That would be one of them probably. I have like fears about like somebody listening to the Beastie Boys and thinking the same thing. Yeah. You know, I think... 
that's gonna happen. Is it? Well, I mean, I think that people will listen to some things by the Beastie Boys. Like, I think people will listen to, like, Check It Out from Two to Five Burrows. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, that won't sound particularly relevant, but, like, Root Down, Root Down will always be good. Right. Right. You know, I think, uh... Nope. Nope. If you, if you start listening to Beastie Boys and you don't know anything about their story, you yeah. think 90s white... 80s, 90s white rappers. You know, appropriation is the first you know, word. It's the very you know, first word that yeah. pops in your head. Yeah. And uh, if you actually know the story and you know, know who they came up with and know who their peers were and who loved them, uh, then you wouldn't think that. But you know, that's a lot. That's part of what I think, you know, why their story should be told. Um, and it's really not well known. Like, even at the peak of their popularity, it wasn't that well known. Like, these, like, ratty hardcore kids who were sort of take, oh, come on, every time. Taken in by by both, like, really, like, exciting rappers in yeah. the early 80s and hardcore guys. Yeah. I would watch that. I would watch your documentary about the Beastie Boys. I'd like to do that, but, you know. Uh, we have some irons in the fire. Some irons in the fire. Yeah. All right, can you, ladies and gentlemen? By the way, a little quick interruption. My name is Anthony John Agnello. If you are just joining us, senior social reporter here at Games Radar. Welcome to the inaugural episode of I Got Next, our new talk show where we hang out with people who make things that are very interesting, and we play games and we talk about them. Uh, and hanging out with me right now is Alex Young, the director of REM by MTV, a, a documentary about the awesome, awesome band, R.E.M. And we are discussing our failure to beat DuckTales. If you have also noticed that the stream page says that we're playing Captain America and the Avengers, we tried to play Captain America and the Avengers. The controller didn't work, which is a bummer. But I don't think I don't think it would have mattered, Alex. Like even if the controller had been no, there's no way we get 90 minutes out of this. <laughs> not only not only would we not get 90 minutes, I mean we would. We would just never be at the second level. And if you just joined us here, we're playing this on normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. I'm glad you're taking the ice level. Yeah, I'm, 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 like, so we've got, we've got 20 minutes left. I don't think we're leaving until this is beaten. No. So back to R.E.M. Back to R.E.M. Uh, you know, if you don't know the band, you definitely know the songs. And if you know some of the songs, you know more. Uh, you know more than you think you do. So I think uh, it's great for fans, but a wide audience, too, I think. Uh, you know, it shows you a time when bands weren't... Fuck! Being micromanaged and being, you know, they, they're like a if a international huge band could be a mom and pop, yeah, operation. That's REM. Yeah, uh, that's in all the best ways. Perfect description. Um, so it's it's sort of a time gone by where, you know, there weren't press releases about who's dating who in your band. And Does that happen? I, don't know, I think so. It's yeah. been it's been a few years since I've gotten press releases about music, like. The last time I was getting press releases about music, it was still, like, 2004 or 5, and the old system of doing things was very much in place. Uh, like, the most a band had was a face, uh, MySpace page. Uh -huh. That's a... that's a. <laughs> Do you kids know what MySpace is? This is where you get... Is it worth yep. going no! Is it worth going over here? No, 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 no. Right. There's nothing over there. There's nothing you want. Yeah, it's funny. My my journey, my journey to loving REM, was I, I had the same experience that a lot of like yeah. younger people did, uh, in like the early '90s, where I heard "Losing My Religion" when I was like 12, mm -hmm. and I became obsessed. Oh, oh my god! It's really fast. Yeah, we're having. You know what? All right. So we have the... Here's what we're going to do. We're leaving. We're going back to Duckburg. 
I also got automatic for the people for one penny. Oh, nice. There you go. Yes. ZJ Rosenberg's automatic, automatic for the people for one penny. My favorite REM song of all time, though, is actually, uh, is it Picture of Life or Portrait of Life? Imitation of Life. Imitation of Life. Thank you. That's really embarrassing that my favorite song by the band is one that I can't remember the name of. You can hear it on The Unplugged 2001. Yes. That makes me so happy. That was that year. That was 2001. Yeah. Reveal. Reveal. Great album. Reveal is freaking awesome. Uh, Transylvania. That's where we can pick up some extra lives. We can get through this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have 15 minutes left on today's stream. That's it? (laughs) See? This does go fast. (laughs) You're... You're shocked. You can only hear me for half of it. But. You can only hear only hear Alex for about thirty seconds. Early on, no, there's not the one up we want over there. Any more Ducktales minutia? Any more? <laughs> God, I like. We did determine that like Scrooge McDuck is the worst person. Also, like, wears blue. Is there? The Eagle Boys wear red. Is there, like, any philanthropic work that took place on the show? I don't know. I don't like, was there so. ever a moment... <laughs> God, was, it's like the most Reagan-era no thing. There's no $2,500 plate dinner that he hosted. He's like, I gotta go this dinner. <laughs> like, is there's no episode where he's like, let's go and work at a soup kitchen, Huey, Dewey, and Louie? Because that's what we should do. We're, we're privileged and... We have to go break ground on this Little League field. <laughs> But Glomgold is going to stop it. Yeah, he's... <laughs> Why does he... He's... I don't know if Flintheart Glomgold is... Flintheart Glomgold. Is, is worse or better. Because it seems that, like, he really hates Scrooge McDuck for being rich. But it, it's ro- it's rooted in jealousy. It's yeah. like, he, he wants to be that rich, too. So he's a terrible person. <laughs> This is back in the day when if you wanted to become richer, you stole from other rich people. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's like the way it was done. Yeah, now they realize it's much easier to do it differently. So, I, I don't know if, if you share this sentiment, but I, I find nothing worse in the world when it comes to media and when somebody says that they not only are they going to reboot something, but we're going to do a dark and gritty version of whatever you're talking about like nothing makes me tune out faster than the words dark and gritty in conjunction and yeah. no well i don't know i guess you know there are lots of bad versions of that but there is just as many good versions so there are some good versions uh, like what are you thinking specifically like if i well like I mean, fantastic four yeah fantastic yeah. four i never had a strong connection to the fantastic four anyway uh so that didn't bother me. I understand why. I, th- I think you that. could do that. I think you could you could do. But like I, I, the th- the one that pops up in my head is the uh, the most recent Superman movie. You know, I'm Man not an still. apologist. I'm not a Superman apologist. But I sat there watching that movie and it felt like this is it. This is how this is this what is how this, this is what work. it looks like in the comic. This is at first, for the first time it felt like this is a real <laughs> comic fight. And I don't even think that's the case in the Avengers movies because they're yeah. kind of just standing in a like in a circle uh, posing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's fine, but Superman felt like tactile and real. Where All right. you know, there's still some. Uh, Alex, here's what I here's here's what I just want to throw out to you. Yeah. About that Superman movie, he stops a fight. Cold. He's fighting the Kryptonian woman general. Uh huh. Who I can't remember her name, not Zod. And it's like Nina. Or it's like, yeah, it's something like yeah. that. And they stop the fight just so that he can punch her into an IHOP. And then there is a clear image of the IHOP. <laughs> so that they can continue fighting in front of these special Superman pancakes that they have made at the International House of Pancakes. I like the, uh, the fake. Jurassic World poster someone made that just had Mercedes logos <laughs> all over it. I've seen that. Uh, it's really poorly done on purpose. Uh, yeah, I, you know, that that whole thing is pretty annoying. Yeah, and, like, uh, I guess the Zack... There's no way around it. The Zack Snyder realm of dark and gritty gets me. 
uh, a little. I, I'm like, like sucker punch. If I well, die, that just doesn't work. That just doesn't work. No. It's just bad. Yodel, it worked for Batman Begins. Yes, that's true. Well, that's the reason yeah, that's, why this it, is happening. Yeah. Uh, you know, what else? Games? I, I actually kind of worry that the Final Fantasy VII remake is oh, going I, to be... Oh, yeah. I agree. Because yeah. part of what makes Final Fantasy VII great is that it's funny. Like, there are many moments of humor in that game. And also, like, there's a whole sequence where you have to, like, perfectly time a jump off a dolphin's nose in a town right. where, like, where a little girl has is worried about pollution. Like, I don't think people remember that game. I, see, I, I hope that it's dark and gritty and you still do that stuff. Right, yes. So, but that, they'll just cut it. I, ideally, all of those things should be present simultaneously. That's why, like, I think, like, if they... <laughs> why I asked and why I brought that up was, like, I think about, like, dark and gritty DuckTales... And single and loving it here in the chat is saying, "Oh, like Darkwing Duck is dark and gritty Ducktales." But I can imagine there being like dark and gritty Ducktales where it's like all about bringing down Scrooge because he's a uh, because he's part of the one percent. Uh -huh. Like the Beagle Boys Are start off like a, yeah, like they, they it's it's about radical anarchists bringing down this this horrific industrialist. What games do you guys play off of Steam? I've never played anything off of Steam. What do we play off of Steam? I'm trying to think. The last thing I downloaded off of Steam was uh, there's an amazing Sega Genesis co collection with oh, what like is it? 70 games, and it's 250. What's it called? It's just like Sega Genesis Archives or something, and it, like every first party Genesis game that exists is in there. I have. It might be the. PS3 thing I have. It's Sonic's. Oh no, it's it's way more. Oh, it's uh, way more than that. The emulation is not super great. <laughs> they tried to make the Super Mario Brothers dark and gritty with the Bob Hoskins and Jack no John. That's uh, there's a oral history of that somewhere that's pretty fascinating. It's, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I love I love hearing about that movie and how Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo were just shit can yeah. for almost the entire filming of it. That makes me so happy. Oh. I, I don't, don't want to jinx things. This is going really well. <laughs> I don't want uh, to... I saw, I saw Mario Brothers in the theater. I did, did not you? see... I've never seen Double Dragon. I've never seen Double Dragon. I've either. actually never seen Wizard the whole way through. Wizard? Man, I you know, I understand... The Wizard. The, the Wizard. The Wizard. I understand like the enjoyment of the like culture around going to see that movie with a group of people although i feel like that's starting to fade like yeah uh there are like so many so many people who need to see the wizard and i think they pretty much all yeah seen they, the everybody <laughs> who needed to see the wizard has seen the wizard all right you're tackling the himalayas do it oh, you did this no i left because we were almost out of lives oh you left i left to go get us life <laughs> your your pilot manservant <laughs> took us up. Oh, it won't even let me do anything. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, Dark and Gritty. Is there anything coming up that's Dark and Gritty? Uh, is the Coach reboot going to be Dark and Gritty? Is the what reboot? The Coach reboot. <laughs> yeah, man. Have you heard Craig T. Nelson talk to people? He's a psychotic. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Craig T. Nelson's like a nut, nutter conservative. Oh. Big time. Uh, my favorite Craig T. Nelson quote, this is, a, this is one you can find on YouTube, which I delight in, ah, is Craig, Craig T. Nelson uh, is talking about, like, the perils of the, like, welfare state. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, I just think that, like, we're in a nation of takers, and you got to be like me. I pulled myself up by the bootstraps. I was on unemployment. I wasn't a taker. And he's literally saying, like, people who take handouts are bad. I am good because I was a self-starter and was took on, on, on unemployment. It's, wow. it's a, a, one of the most beautiful things. And then his face falls off. His, his face pull, falls off. This is all part of the Incredibles uh, and Randian <laughs> <laughs> promotion. His face, his face is pulled off, and that's what happens when you... 
build your home on an Indian burial ground. Oh. <laughs> uh, I did not see that reboot. Heard it is very bad. Yeah. Actually, it do it does the thing that I think. It, you know, like it's funny, like. If you're not going to do like a wildly different interpretation of something, yeah. I don't think that there's a lot of value in necessarily doing it. I'm not opposed to remaking things. Yeah, like the Evil Dead remake is. Yeah, it's you know, good. It's fine. entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. We got. Yeah, I got bounce go. right. Uh, no, no, just ride it. <sighs> it's fine. It's all fine. Everything is fine. All right. I really didn't want to do this. <laughs> Uh, I'm not, like, opposed to the ideas of remakes. Like, I don't think the remake of DuckTales is bad because, like, the original is sacrosanct somehow. Uh, like, the remake is bad just because it's bad. Uh, but, like, you know, like, look at theater. The <laughs> Nobody complains about, like, oh, man, they're putting on Henry V again. Maybe they did, and they just <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody in the 18th century yeah. was like, us oh, bullshit. You guys don't know what it was like. Back at the original. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Was Craigie Nelson in that? Is that why that came up? Oh. You got it, you got it. Yeah, I got it. Ha ha! Oh, there we go. <laughs> Who is this? Uh, snowman? Yeah. It's 4.55, everybody. And we are on... We are almost to the last level. I think we're gonna make it, man. I don't wanna... I don't wanna count my... Count my chickens before they've turned into chickens. Oh. To not eggs. You know... Like, this is another one. Like, he was just living there. I had to kill this animal for a crown. I had to kill <laughs> this, this animal, which was protecting its territory. I had to kill it with a stick and take its crown. And we are... <laughs> We're not... All land clear. You've got all the land money. I'm just throwing money around. This game is missing a bin, a money bin. Yeah, it is yeah. missing. It's definitely missing a bin. Also very Mario with the... Uh... <laughs> I <laughs> oh, you gotta go back here. Yeah, you have to go back here, and like uh, you just go right back. You you go right back to. See, Huey's still kidnapped. <laughs> Single and loving it. This crown belongs in a skyscraper-sized <laughs> money safe. Four minutes. Alex, you you. We briefly touched on what you're working on at the moment. Started to touch on it. What are you working on right uh, now? We're working on some ideas to uh, pitch to different parts. I work for MTV. Yes. Uh, working on some ideas to pitch to the other departments in the company, and I can't really talk about it. Oh, I yeah. love that. Love that answer. It's my fave. So at what point do I have to like lip sing or... like? smash an egg on my face. This is a talk show, right? Isn't that what you have to That's, do? You know what? Like, I'm, not, I'm not going to make you rap battle me. Thank you. Uh, you don't have to dance. We don't have to trick members of the audience into wearing uh, goofy sweaters. Uh -huh. All you have to do is play a video game. Okay. That's it. It's very simple. I guess Conan does that. <laughs> well, uh, he, he... He's really going for that demo, right? Yeah. Your like, demo. I, I, it's really... really Wow, this is uh, the easiest Dracula Duck. Why is Dracula Duck the final boss? You're in Transylvania. Yeah, but like... He's not the final boss. Isn't there a second one? No. No, you have to, you have to chase Flint Heart Glomgol. What about the What about the spaceship? Oh! Do you find an alien? No. What about the key to the spaceship? What about the key to the spaceship? The key to the spaceship is just to get the controller. Oh. Yeah, we just beat the game. Oh, you have to race. Yeah, we have to... I always wonder what happened if you didn't beat him, but I would never actually. Oh, you just die. Do it. Oh, it yeah, yeah it, it, nothing awesome happens. The story is so slow. Heart. Oh snap! Treasure for days. Two I can't minutes, look at minutes. this. Look at look at look at how down to the wire. Duckula's coming back. New uh, Danger Mouse series. You read about that? Oh no. Yeah. That's Danger happening? Mouse reboot in the UK. Is it a dark and gritty reboot? I don't know, but... Danger Mouse yeah. was already kind of dark. It, it was wasn't a, gritty. You no, know, it wasn't gritty. <laughs> you know, the real tragedy of the internet age is the death of the duck press. <laughs> like, <laughs> the duck. 
stuff. You know, the print, the print tradition now of the duck blue. press. Now he's blue. Hooray, Unc. See, this isn't this isn't canonical. They don't call him Unca Scrooge. Unca Scrooge. <laughs> but don't forget. Don't. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and forget that you helped, guys. Well, Little. it should be easy on easy. Oh, kind of strange. No. <laughs> ZJ Rosenberg, yes, the Archie vs. Predator comic is dark as hell. It is just Archie with Predator in Riverdale. It's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for checking out the show today. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure. You can come back here every single Tuesday from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to be talking to all kinds of interesting people next week. We're hanging out with Ryan and Erica, the creative team on Marvel's uh, The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Wow. Uh, which is going to be really cool. Wow. Uh, we're going to have all kinds of fun guests. Tomorrow, we're starting another new show wherein we look at weird multiplayer games. That's going to be hosted by our own editor-in-chief in the U.S., Ludwig Kitzman, and uh, co-hosted by Ashley Reed. And then be back here on Thursday when we start our other talk show where we talk to video game developers. Uh, this week, we're going to be playing Galaxy with the guys from 17-Bit Games. And you can go to any fine place in the world and buy yourself a copy of R.E.M. by MTV and and all of the unplugged vinyl and all of these wonderful things. And, and Alex is going to be making something else in the very near future Hopefully. for MTV. Alex, thank you so thank much, you. man. This is freaking awesome, and Alex is great, and watch that movie. All right, everybody? We will see you next time. Follow us here if you enjoyed today. It's that little heart at the bottom of the screen. Just, just click the heart. It, it's not dangerous. It doesn't, it's not a commitment. It's not like, you know, we're going to like have to really make this thing work. You'll just know when we're live. It's wonderful. All right, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>